life um, so often gives us our, our uh, greatest gifts brilliantly disguised as our worst nightmares. And what that did for me um, was clear me of the prison that most people live in, which is the fear of what other people think. You know, when you're under that historic level of constant ridicule, when you can't walk down any street without being laughed at, when you can't go in a bar because there's uproar of ridicule, um, then uh, when you when you stand in front of um, uh, an audience of students and um, you can't speak for, for like five minutes because of the noise and the ridicule and the stuff. Um, then, you know, uh, you know now, David, excuse me, you know now you, you, you were a free man, a free soul, a free spirit, and they sensed that. And they didn't like that. It scared them. It made them feel very ill at ease. Who is this guy? And that's why I think you were pounded and abused so badly. You were free. Well, yeah, well, I think uh, the, the, because we live in such an inverted world, because of the way it's um, systematically constructed, um, people are frightened of freedom. They're frightened oh, yeah. of spontaneity. Yeah. They're frightened of people who are different. It's always been the same throughout known human history. Yep. Uh, because it's one of the things I, I, I talk about in the, on the, the world tour. It, it, it's, um, when, when, you, when you look at um, why people have such a myopic um, view of everything, um, you, and you, you, then, you then look at the process of what we call life. Um, you, you come out of the womb um, and immediately you, your perceptions are influenced by your parents who've been through the system you're about to go through. You then, in a ludicrously short time after coming into this world, you're sitting at a desk with an authority <laughs> figure telling you what is, what isn't, when you have to be there, when Absolutely. you can leave, when you can eat. And this goes on all yeah. the way through your formative years yeah. where you are given the state's version of reality. This is the point. It's about what is, what isn't, what's possible, what's not possible. Uh, and then um, after you've, um, you've, you've gone out of the um, programming system called education, you then go into the institutions, you go into journalism or politics or science or, or, or medicine, whatever, and you take with you that core programming, um, that core download of the perception of normal, what I call the postage stamp normal, the postage stamp consensus. Mm -hmm. And this then um, defends itself from all borders because you, you, first of all, have peer pressure to conform because your peers have been through the same download and accepted it. And anyone who questions the download version of normal mm -hmm is not normal um, and what is normal normal is just what we normally experience that's what is all it is and what we normally believe uh, and 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 so um you then have the mainstream media and and much of the alternative media i have to say that that um also supports the normal in many, many ways. Correct. Um, oh, yeah. And and, and mm -hmm. all this um, information that you're receiving throughout your life is a, um, a downloading that normal. Um, a version of normal, and then constantly confirming that that download is is right, that that download is is how things are, and so when people come along and they, um, I mean, p people like me are not just challenging nine eleven; we're challenging uh, absolutely every perception and assumption, right down to the fundamentals of what reality is. When someone's doing that, well, they're either mad or bad because you can't handle it because it's so far off your normal. And, and, and therefore, they've got to be mad because you're normal. So they're, they're saying something completely different. They must be mad. It's, 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 that's the definition. Uh, but what is happening now? now? Let me say one thing about what you just made so clear. Normal, the download of normal is really the imposition of, of limits barriers and parameters that we are supposed to stay in to be quote successful in life exactly. that's normal correct that's normal i mean i, I tell you uh, the, the, there was a, a, a just a little news story on the bbc website uh, the other day we've just had a, a, a little holiday they call, we call them bank holidays in this um, in this uh, country but it's, mm. it's a period of about three days mm. and uh, it said um that um Shopping was down 4% over the bank holiday, and it was kind of a bad thing because it's bad for the economy. And, and, and you know, the, the point I, I made on that was so um, fewer people 
buying things they overwhelmingly don't need with money they overwhelmingly <laughs> don't have is bad. Uh, <laughs> it's, or, or, yeah, well, what? That's good. But you see, what what what, what has happened is everything's inverted everything's upside down um and, and but the upside down is how things normally are thus that is normal i mean what is normal you you were born in the outback of australia your normal is never seeing anybody and never seeing a car you you are born in downtown la your normal is never not seeing people and never not seeing vehicles passing um, and it's just um the, the 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 normal that you experience now what the system does what the program does is it gives you a version of uh, normal, uh, which is how society is run on that basis, and so um, your normal is is that myopic vision of mm-hmm. possibility, mm-hmm. Uh, and and that's what where where people. Um, uh, live um, uh, in their heads from cradle to grave. And, and it, this is so important. This is the absolute fundamental of how the few control the many. You can't do it physically to billions of people. You have to control their perceptions because their perceptions of self, reality, and the world and world events leads to what, what they'll support what they won't support, what they'll challenge, what they won't challenge. It leads to everything, who they condemn, who who they blame, who they don't blame. It all comes from perception. And what we're looking at, this the whole bottom line of this conspiracy, it's a perception deception. It's a manipulation of perception. And so the revolution is not stockpiling weapons and and. and fighting the bad guys it's actually a revolution of perception because from that revolution of perception Mm -hmm. comes a revolution of action and 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 therefore a revolution of change perception management uh it's all about perception control and once that is shaken or cracked uh and the paradigm begins to weaken uh people begin to push against those cracks and they want to move out uh it's not normal for them to be held cradle to grave in such a constricted state. I, I completely agree. This is, uh, and what you've just spelled out in the last 10 minutes is, is really the key to virtually everything and the liberation of our planet, our people, our species. The, we have been so engineered into perception prison. Uh, it's not funny. Uh, we got five corporations now here in the U.S. running 95 to 98 percent of the media. It's no contest. Yeah, when you when you look uh, at the um, American political scene, uh, particularly since the 1980s, I mean, it's kind of breathtaking when yeah, you you, yeah. you look at it. Because first of all, um, what most people won't realize, because the mainstream media won't tell them, is that uh, the Clintons and the Bushes are extremely close bosom buddies. They were um, running drugs through the MENA airstrip in Arkansas when yeah. um, when Clinton was uh, Bill Clinton was uh, was governor. That was in that was in my books in the mid nineteen nineties. You know, I, would, I, I remember tracking tracking the Clintons yeah. a long time. I mean, crikey! Yeah. I mean, they've not just got skeletons in the cupboard; they've got whole cemeteries. These people and and what. What um, um, what we um, uh, are looking at, therefore, is um, n- this this idea that uh, America is free because anyone can become president. Well, let's go back to 1980. It was Reagan Bush, which in fact was Bush Reagan in in terms of the power in the uh, White indeed, House. Indeed, indeed. Um, and so, so Father Bush had um, two. Uh, terms as a de facto president. He then had one term as the official president. He's then replaced by two terms of Clinton, who is replaced by two terms of uh, Boy Bush, who, 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 who um, the, the is replaced by, idiot. Uh, by Obama, who, who, mm-hmm. who now could be replaced uh, very likely by another Clinton. I mean, yeah. there yeah. are th- th- more than 300 million people in America. How can that be unless it is absolutely contrived? And if it's contrived, who's contriving it? These are the questions that people need to ask. And when you ask them, they'll, the, well, the answers are very different to, to the world that people think they live in. Yeah. It's all about asking the right questions. People just don't ask. They, uh, they react, and they do. I remember when you used to, your message of, uh, your classic message of problem, reaction, solution. 
is so rudimentary to understanding uh, organized societal life on this planet. It's how the game is played. And all these clubs, all these so-called religions, political parties, it doesn't matter. They're simply control mechanisms to enable the download to be completed. And whatever color paint the download is, it doesn't matter. It's still a download of barriers, parameters, and limits. And you're not supposed to go out. You're supposed to stay inside. Yeah, that's that's why the the the, the real um, the real revolution is um, stepping outside of those parameters and living your life outside of that, speaking your truth outside of that, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, doing what you 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 feel is right outside of that, rather than being cowed into um, uh, just following the normal out of fear of the consequences of not following the normal. I mean, it starts with 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 parents. Uh, I mean, our parents set parameters that um, right. are of great limitation on, on children in terms of what they can think, what they can do, uh, what they can say. Um, it, it's, it starts right at the earliest, um, the earliest time in people's lives and goes all the way through. And, and what I'm finding, Jeff, is, is this is a, a phenomenon that I'm, I'm finding in, um, in, in, in more and more people, so something is happening. It's people uh, who have reached the point where they've been through this system, they've followed the carrot, um, you know, I must be someone, I'm, I must uh, um, do this, I must achieve oh, this. Oh, false gods, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, gotta, gotta, gotta. And, and they've, they've kind of reached that point that where they were aiming for. They might be the CAO, the CEO, they might, they, they might, have made a few uh, uh, a few bob um, mm-hmm. and, 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 and they're at this point maybe in their, their 50s actually some even earlier and they're saying what was it all about <laughs> okay yes I, I've, I've strived all That's my right. life you know yeah. I, I've, I've you know what was it that John Lennon uh, said um, uh, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans and <laughs> and, and suddenly they're there, but they don't feel any different. Um, and, and, and it's like, you know, it's, it's been a hoax. Well, it, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a hoax. It, it, it's putting that carrot just in front of you. This, this is what you need to do. This is what life is about. It's about striving. It's about achievement. It's about being someone. It's about being seen as being someone. Um, it's about fame. It's about money. It's, it's about um, uh, power, all these things. Um, and, and you follow the carrot, and then eventually you get there. Well, most people don't, don't, don't get there because the system won't let them, but um, some people get there. And when they get there, they don't feel any different. Uh, and, and all their life has passed, and they don't really want to admit to themselves, first of all, that it has been a hoax because they don't want to admit they've been hoaxed and, and their life has been uh, uh, right. you know, ch- chasing a dream that turned out to be not a dream at all. But th- there's more and more people but I'm coming across, um, uh, and like I say, the numbers are uh, so common now that there is something happening. People are having this reassessment. Um, what is life about? And once you, again, you said a few minutes ago, it's about asking the right questions. That's exactly what it is. Um, and when you start asking those questions, yes, what is, is it all about? What, what, why do we do this? Then the system starts to crumble. Um, in your in your uh, perception of it, because the answers are, we do it for no good reason other than we're this told to do it. You to control the many, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's so good to hear you say this. You, you travel, you have contact with people face to face. I don't. I live in a little thimble, and to hear you say that people are getting it, and I I'm also hearing you say that they're getting it in a very broad brushed, common sense way that will give them a new let's just call it a new beginning a new bedrock a new they're they're formulating a new bedrock from which that they can operate for the rest of their lives and look at things and see i think people from what i'm gathering are seeing through the lie and if ever in this country people trust the mainstream media again shame shame on them Uh, it has been exposed that you and i know it and most of our listeners tonight know it as the biggest hoax, fraud, control mechanism, dirty, down and dirty control mechanism that you could ever see. And they are liars, they are whores, they're prostitutes, they're the worst. And, and, and you know why I walked away from television news after 12 years. I could see where it was going. 
Mass, mass mind control. Disgusting. And so I started this program because the human mind is still somewhat, uh, it does enjoy sanctity, and that's what I wanted to go after. Same with you. Well, the thing about perception, where does perception come from? It comes from, yes, experience, uh, which gives you a perception through experience. But uh, and, and experience is a form of information if you break it down. And, and the, the rest of perception comes from um, information that we, we call information, which is from the media, it's from the laughingly, bravely, ludicrously called education system. Oh, and so yeah. your perceptions are formed by the information you receive. And so if you are um, seeking to uh, program perceptions, then you have to control information that people receive because uh, that's the only way you're going to do it. And and what the alternative media has done, of course, people talk about the alternative media as if it's one thing. It's not. It's a vast, vast spectrum from, on one side, uh, imperceptibly different from uh, almost from the mainstream across to uh, yeah. those that are questioning every facet of, right. of right. belief and normal. But mm -hmm. it, 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 the... the um, the alternative media has, in within that spectrum, um, offered people another information source, another way of looking at the world and world events. And uh, the uh, the mainstream postage stamp normal version is so ludicrous, so limited, so um, uh, uh, just without credibility that it cannot stand um, uh, the uh, the challenge of an alternative view. This is why mystics and seers and and and, and uh, mavericks uh, and uh, various kinds throughout human history have always been seen as dangerous by those in authority at the time. Why? Because they're offering another way of looking at everything that is different from what the authorities are trying to sell, um, whether it's religion um, in the past or whatever. It's another way of looking at things. And that is the most dangerous thing that can possibly happen to um, to that which is seeking to um, I I impose and program and perception, alternative ways of looking at things. Right. Um, but what I'm finding very encouraging is you know, what? well, because the mass ridicule and all this stuff uh, 26 years ago, 25 years ago, um, it was clear there weren't many who were, were open to looking at the world in a different way. But that has changed. That has changed dramatically. Uh, the kind of people that, I mean, the moment, you know, I'm going into cafes for a cup of tea to read me paper, but I don't read me paper because people are coming up to me all the time wanting to <laughs> talk to me about this information. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. they're all they're all across the spectrum of society. That There is something happening. And I I think that, you know, three years from now, um, we are going to be in a very different place in terms yeah. of the, the numbers of people who are saying, hold on a minute, this is making sense. What, what's going on? And, and, and this is the other thing. This is a very important uh, uh, aspect of this. I said many, many years ago that there's going to come a point where that which has manipulated from the hidden will have to appear in the scene. Because if you're going to transform human society in a certain way, there comes a point where it has to become obvious that that's what's going on. Not necessarily that there is a, a hidden hand behind it, but, but the, the fact that society is changing um, uh, very, uh, very demonstrably um, and, and to the point where people are going, hold on a minute, I, I, what's going on here? Um, and, and, and this manifests, of course, in, in the increasing concern about the level of surveillance and, and what have you. Um, and, and we're at that point now where the hidden is, is actually having to appear in the scene in changes in society. And that is making more and more people um, uh, question what's going on. I mean, the idea that, I mean, when you look at um, the, the, the amount of money that's spent on surveillance and um, and all that side of it, and uh, destruction of privacy. Um, and, and then you look at the number of people who are uh, affected by terrorism in the West in terms of numbers, right. and compare that with the number of people that die in road accidents, number of people that... 45,000 a year, David. 45,000 a year die in the U.S. on the roads. Yeah, uh, and, and, and so, so, so it's not about 
protecting life, this terrorism uh, spending. Of course it's not this uh, mass surveillance and control system. It's about building a, a, a control system that will prevent rebellion by uh, the, the, the masses, if you like, against the less than 1%. Is it not well, an that admission that the is- mainstream media can't do the job anymore and they've got to have surveillance to back it? This, this plan for the world is, is, is projected long into what we call the future, um, and it's unfolding. I mean, uh, you know, I go into some really deep, 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 deep levels of reality and how it works, um, but um, if you look at Orwell, he um, talked about the, um, the telly screens. Well, these are the smart TVs, and the smart TVs we have now are only Mark One or Mark Two. I mean, the, you know, the surveillance that right. they give, right. you know, filming you and, and recording you in your own, your own front room. But there was a, a – and then you look at um, Aldous Huxley – who was talking about the, the the drugs and the genetics, which is which is all uh, uh, unfolding um, uh, as well. So the, the, they were tapping into, for whatever reason, into this projected um, plan for the future. And about tw- <clears throat> excuse me, twenty years after Orwell's um, 1984, um, in uh, 1969, uh, there was a guy called uh, uh, Dr. Richard Day. He was a Rockefeller insider. Um, he he uh, was an executive of Planned Parenthood. And in 1969, he was um, addressing um, the pediatricians in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, and uh, just told them, for whatever reason, what, what he was doing, but he told them to, to not, not take notes and not um, uh, record because he was going to tell them how the world was going to change um, because basically um, what he represented was going to change it, was changing it. And um, one uh, doctor, um, Dr. Dunnigan, did take notes and did, did some interviews before he died about what Richard Day said that day. It's, it's extraordinary. It uh, is what amazing. He said, what he it said is. in detail. Yeah. The reason I mention that is because he indicated in what he said was coming Mm -hmm. um, uh, and the way he described um, uh, what what, what was uh, coming technologically he described he described the world wide web he he certainly described described, uh, smart TVs and and the world wide web uh, was supposed to be invented what around 1989 something like that and and, and he he, um, uh, talked about it in 1969 and of course fundamental to this whole technological um, uh, AI um, takeover, um, and I, I, could, I could talk at great length about it and, 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 and um, what's happening in front of our eyes if we only, only could see it.